You ever wondered what separates good editors from the best? There's one word that describes it perfectly, adaptability. The editing market constantly evolves, the trends are changing and there are more editing styles than ever before. So if you can adapt, you're automatically positioned higher. But what if I told you that there's one editing style that has been bulletproof to all the trends and all the changes in the market? It's documentary editing style. Lower frame rate, sharp texture and clarity makes it ideal for plain storytelling. It also gives a feel of old times, so we're gonna move back to 1987 and use the newest release of Stranger Things Season 5 for our practice. So today I'll give you fundamentals that will help you master that timeless editing style. And hopefully it will put you more in demand. But before we begin, Black Friday promotion ends in less than 24 hours, so make sure to grab the best offer of the year. I actually used some of the assets from the 3-in-1 bundle in that intro and it made my editing process so much faster. Link is in the description, but now let's dive into Adobe After Effects. So we're back in software and remember guys, you got all the necessary assets for this tutorial in the description below. So for starters, I'm gonna show you the comp settings, 1920 by 1080 and this is important, we're gonna set the frame rate to 15. This is gonna be perfect for documentary editing style because it often characterizes by that choppy look. The duration is gonna be set to 10 seconds and we're gonna hit OK. So as you can notice, we got these assets over here, so first we're gonna grab the logo onto the timeline. And what I'm gonna do with this is add exposure effect. And since this is gonna serve us as a background, we wanna lower down the exposure to around negative 4.5. So that way we're gonna be able to focus more on what's in the middle. The next step would be holding down Alt and clicking on the stopwatch. That way we got the expression window over here and we can type in the expression wiggle and in brackets we're gonna add 10 comma 1. Let's click away and this is gonna give us that blinking effect which is looking extremely cool. So now I'm gonna close it down, I'll go back to the project and what you wanna do is grab the poster and drop it on the timeline. So here we got main characters from Stranger Things and what we're gonna do is set scale to around 33. Now I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and we kinda wanna mask out every single character. So I'm gonna click on the poster and I'll start with Dustin. So we kinda wanna go for something like that. I'm actually gonna double click the mask and we can adjust it a bit. All right, now I'm gonna duplicate this layer by hitting Ctrl D. Then I'm gonna double click the mask again and I'll move it over to the right. And we're gonna keep repeating the same procedure until we have five characters. Here you could have a little bit more space, that's fine. Then we're gonna duplicate again, double click the mask, and let's do it like that. All right, so when you have this, you can actually adjust it a little bit. So make sure to select the first two layers over here and we're gonna move them over to the right. And here we're also gonna fix it a bit. Now I'm gonna select them all and I'll recenter the anchor point. And the next thing you wanna do is open up property for the mask, actually a mask path. So we're gonna create keyframes for all of the layers and we're gonna actually move it over here to the beginning. Now I'm gonna make sure this poster is selected and I'm gonna double click the mask again. And with the time indicator over here, I'm gonna lower it down. So you kinda wanna make it shorter. Then I'm gonna do the same with this one but we kind of want to have it a bit higher than the other one. And moving over to that one, this one is going to be the highest. Then we're going to double click this. Let's do it like that. And as for the last one, it's going to go like that. And if we play it back, that's how it's going to look. You can already notice that cool frame rate, which is giving us that vintage touch. Then make sure to place the time indicator over here and we're going to select all the posters. I'm going to hit P and I'll create keyframes for position. Now I'm going to move back to the beginning and now we want to select the right one, the middle one, and also the one on the left, and we're gonna drag them lower. Now I'm gonna do the same with these ones, but this time it's gonna go to the upper side. And I'm gonna select all the keyframes, hit F9 in order to ease. Then I'm gonna head over to the graph editor, and what you wanna do is actually create a peak on the left. So select all the keyframes over here, drag it like that. And this time we're only gonna go for the property for the mask path. So I'm gonna select them all, hit F9, go to the graph editor. You can click here on that icon and you will fit the graph. And this time, instead of creating a peak on the left, we're gonna create one in the middle. We can actually push it more towards the left. Then I'm gonna take all these posters and I'll drag it to the right. Then over here, we're gonna have a play button, which we're gonna kind of click. So make sure to head over here, grab the start tool, and we're gonna create a triangle. So I'm gonna recenter and then I'll change the type to polygon. And then just change the rotation over here to 90. Recenter again and you're gonna have a play button. But instead of that, I'm gonna use something from Motion Essence. So I'm gonna head over to buttons and I'm gonna take the play button and drop it on the timeline. Actually on top. And this is gonna fit perfectly here. 
So we're going to do the same procedure either with the triangle or with the motion essence asset. So I'm going to create a keyframe for scale. And then at the moment when these layers are showing up, we're just going to decrease the value. We can actually squeeze it in. Then I'm going to copy the first keyframe and paste it here. So this is going to imitate the pressing movement. So I'm going to make sure it's somewhere here. Then I'm going to probably push it more towards the right even more. And then it fades out perfectly fine. We can always go over here and change the position of opacity. But for now, that seems fine. So in terms of the triangle, you just need to add opacity keyframes over here. Then what I'm going to do is create a new null object and I'm going to call it controller. Then to this, what we want to do is select all the layers over here and I'm going to parent them to the controller. And once you've done that, make sure to place a keyframe for scale, then move back and we're going to actually decrease the value to around 75. Now, whenever the characters are showing up, we want to have that first keyframe over here. We can easy ease, go to the graph editor, and essentially what you want to do is just push the pick towards the left. So we're going to have something like that. We can actually move it a bit backwards. All right, so the next thing you want to do is select these keyframes. I'm going to hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V, and I'm going to right click, go to keyframe assistant, and I'm going to hit time reverse keyframes. So that way we just created an opposite movement. So if we play it back, it's going to go back but also the graph has a reverse. So I'm going to go to the graph editor and here you want to create a peak in the middle. Okay, just like that. And also as for this one, I'm thinking that pushing back that whole animation will be better. So I'm just going to scale it down a bit more and let's see. So we're going to treat these keyframes as our primary movement. So I'm going to make sure to open up position for the posters and we need to adjust everything accordingly to that set. But as you can notice, we kind of place the keyframe on top of the ones over here. So I'm just going to move it by one frame and I'm going to adjust the time indicator. And then what you want to do is create another set of keyframes over here. So we're just going to copy these keyframes and paste them here. Then we can actually extend that movement so it's a bit longer. And I'm going to actually make sure to apply the mid graph again. So that way here is our graph and we got a pretty cool movement. By the way, this effect looks extremely cool when the layers are rolling down. So as you can notice over here, just the combo of the mask and the position looks absolutely fire here. All right, so now what we're going to do is make sure to select all the posters and we're going to drag them to the left, just like that. I'm going to make sure to apply the same graph over here, which is the middle graph. And let's just see what we got. We're going to make it more interesting by creating a movement that goes one by one. So what you want to do is make sure to grab our poster for Dustin and we're going to shorten the distance between keyframes. Right, something like that should do. Then we're going to take care of another keyframe. and We kind of want to have two frames apart. Then we can select them all and I'll just adjust to this keyframe. And I feel like the last keyframes could be a bit extended. Now, once we got this movement in place, we need to take care of our logo. So I'm going to make sure to open up keyframes for controller. I'll place the time indicator over here, go to the logo. And here we need two properties, which is scale and also position. Now I'm going to move over to the right to that keyframe. And we're going to make sure to scale it down and I'm just going to place it in the upper right corner. I might have made it too small, so we're just going to do it like that. And now to these keyframes, what you want to do is hit F9 and we need to apply the same graph as over here. So I'm just going to read the values for that graph, which is the mid graph, and I'm going to apply it over here. In case you were wondering, it's just a mid graph like that. So let's see now. And then what you want to do is grab the type tool and you want to type in the date over here, which I'm going to show you in a second. But instead of that, I'm also going to use motion essence. So I'm going to head over to notes and we're going to grab the simple note and drop it on the timeline. So over here, we're going to mess around with this. So first, I'm going to make sure it's parented to our controller. So you want to do the same with your date. And I'm going to place it in the right bottom corner. We can also scale it down a bit. All right, so this is going to be pretty cool, but we need to make sure to change the text within that node. So I'm going to go over here and instead of this, we're going to type in stranger things. Then as for the hashtag, I'm going to type in season five and here we're going to type in our date. So I'm going to double click on the text and we need to use the date from the first episode of season five from stranger things. So essentially the current events are taking place on November 3rd, 1987. I'm just going to turn off the caps 
And actually for this, I'm gonna use a different font. I started really liking this one, which is the owner's text. And I'm gonna bump up the font size. So now I'm just gonna place it in the middle and then we're gonna go back to our animation. And once you create your date, just make sure to apply the typewriter effect. So if I just type in anything, you're gonna have a preset called typewriter. So just use this and we're gonna offset it a bit. And then we need to create another movement that is gonna go towards our node. So I'm gonna make sure to create another new object. And this is gonna be our controller two. And now all we need to do is just parent our controller to controller two, and we can start creating movement with this now. So the reason we've done it is because we wanna overlap the keyframes. And if we overlap the keyframes, we're gonna remain the momentum. And remaining the momentum is actually the key to creating smooth edits. So just take a look at that. So I'm gonna create a keyframe for position, also for scale. And I'm gonna move over here and we're just gonna zoom in, go lower and go to the right. All right, something like that should do. I'm gonna select all the keyframes, hit F9, go to the graph editor and essentially we're gonna use the mid graph. So you kind of wanna have that movement going whenever the text is revealing with a typewriter effect. So I'm just gonna make sure it's set like that. And we can actually start it a bit earlier. So if we take a closer look at that layer, here the movement is still going on while we introduce another one. So that way we got both movements intersecting and this is causing that great momentum. And now we're gonna spice it up in a way that will make this whole animation look like it's actually documentary editing style. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. We're gonna call it blinds and I'm gonna add Venetian blinds effect. Here you wanna mess around with the settings, so I'm gonna set the transition completion to 10 and also the width is gonna be set to three. So this is gonna give us these vertical lines over here, which is already making it look like it's on an old TV. But what I'm gonna do is duplicate that effect and I'm gonna change the direction to 90 degrees. So now it's gonna be even better, especially if we zoom out. So before and after. Then what we're gonna do is create another adjustment layer. We're gonna call it color and we're gonna add Lumetri color to this. Here we need to mess around with a few values. So I'm gonna first go to the basic correction and we're gonna set temperature to 60. So this is gonna give us that warm touch, but we're gonna suppress it with the blue shadows in a second. So we don't wanna go for an entirely warm touch. We rather wanna go for something in a vintage style. So in order to get that vintage style, we need to set the saturation to 60. And this is already gonna make a huge difference. Then you wanna head over to the curves and we're gonna bump up the highlights and we're gonna decrease the shadows. So basically an S curve, and then I'm gonna close it down, go to our color wheels, and we're gonna drag the shadows over here towards the blues. And bro, it looks so good already. Then it'll be good to add something on top that will stitch it up together. And essentially what I'm thinking of is an overlay with the dirt or just some stains or scratches. So I'm gonna support myself with Pro Edit Pack. We're gonna head over to Animated Backgrounds. I'm gonna go to Jitter, and I'm gonna take something like that. Let me just show you. Just need to flip it. So this is gonna give us these scratches and a grainy look. So what I'm gonna do is head over to mode and I'm gonna change the mode to screen. And this is gonna be literally perfect for this. And by the way, something I forgot about is actually putting a safety background over here. So what I'm gonna do is disable this for a second and we're gonna create a new solid. And I'm gonna take the color from our Stranger Things background. Let's rename to BG, hit enter and drop it below. Now we can enable everything and this should do. One thing I would do with the jitter is just head over to opacity and set it to 50%. So it's not that intense. And also to have all the effects, all the colors applied to our jitter, we could put it below our blinds. Also something that characterizes that documentary editing style is not adding motion blur, unless it's very necessary. So let me just show you how it would look if we turned it on everywhere. You see that effect over here is losing all the power. It's not as effective as it used to be. So you kind of want to avoid it unless it doesn't look good. So that way we got a fire animation, but one extra touch we could add is heading over to the controller. I'm going to hit P and now alt click the stopwatch. Here I'm going to type in wiggle and in brackets 1,8. So this is going to shake the camera a little bit, which is going to give it a nice touch. So the first value is going to control the speed and the other one is going to control how far the shake goes. All right, so we got our documentary editing style animation ready. And honestly, it looks pretty good. 
we got the blinking effect which is giving us an all times vibe and then we also have saturation lower down which is adding that vintage look then the frame rate is doing the heavy lifting here which is probably the main component when it comes to documentary editing style then also make sure to use blinds to get that kind of tv look and this is looking fire let me just turn off the effect so you could see how it looked before so this is a completely different feel here you have full screen you can't even compare it <laughs> I think that's a wrap so make sure to check out the editing shift for the best promotion this year. You can also check out the video on the screen and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.